You went with the nuclear option. You fired these guys. You're the one who fired them. When did you decide that they should be fired? You know, uh, we've been at this for quite some time now, and uh, we've been looking at, you know, doing everything we can to get this project back on track. And I think it became pretty apparent uh, to us in the last couple of days, but last night after a briefing with the team, um, the decision was made to terminate with convenience. You made the decision last night to fire them? Yes. Okay. What was the last straw for you? You know, I think just to give in the back and forth. At some point, you know, this is our airport. And it, uh, with, the, with the top values being safety and our passenger experience, you know, the more we keep going back and forth, the more we're going to prolong, you know, the passenger experience from being the highest quality that we want for our passengers. And also, the greater risk we have with some of the safety elements that we'd seen and challenge that we'd seen. Um, but it got to a point where, you know, just like any other contractor in your home, we've been down this road, we keep going back and forth. At some point, someone has to make the decision and say, it's time to go a different direction. Um, <clears throat> Kim Day did a press conference a short time ago. Um, I asked her if this is a debacle. She said no. Somebody else asked her if this is a mistake. She said no. Um, she said it's an unfortunate transition. In your words, mm -hmm. what is this? You know what, this is a, an unfortunate situation um, where we had a partner that we thought we could uh, would share our values of making sure that our passenger experience remained the best. We're the best airport in the country, uh, one of the best in the world, and we want to keep it that way. Um, and we were going a different direction with this contractor. We don't believe they were aligned with our values. And once we determine that, it's time to make a decision. Brian, the reality is, you know, this has not been a perfect process on either side. Uh, we have great lessons to learn from this as we move forward as a city. But this is a world-class airport, a world-class aer airport that we take great pride in and we love very much. And at the end of the day, it was time to make a decision uh, to move on, and we did. And um, we're moving forward. Do you think it's fair to call this a fiasco or a debacle? I will tell you that this could have been a more, uh, a better process. It, uh, it was not getting better at the current situation and contractual relationship we had lined up, and that's why we made a decision to move forward. Do you think it's fair to call it a debacle or a fiasco? I wouldn't call it either one of those. Those are your words, I'll let you use those words. Uh, for me as the mayor, my job is number one, to be a good steward of this airport, to make sure it remains one of the top airports in the country and in the world for our passengers and for our partners at the airport. And that's what we're doing right now. We put a stake in the sand and said we've gone far enough. We're gonna do what we can to make sure we get this back on track, take control of the project and move it forward. Did you feel that Great Hall Partners was dishonest with you guys or manipulated you guys at all or tried to? You know what, there's still a lot of things that we have to do in this process, so I'm not going to uh, get too deep into characterizing Great Hall. At this point in time, I can tell you we did not believe that they were, their values were aligned with ours at this point in time. And uh, we needed to change direction with regards to this project, and so we made the decision to do so. From the press conference this morning, it sounds like we're still uh, gonna be several years behind schedule. It sounds that way. Given that, uh, because the original completion was 2021, right. it sounds like we're still looking at 2024, 2025. It sounds that way, although I think there's a lot of moving parts. Yes. Um, given that this is still gonna be delayed by several years, what do you say to the passengers and the people of Denver who have to put up with that mess for years beyond what was originally projected? Listen, yes. here's the reality. We're gonna try grabbing control of this project one of the things that we thought about was, can we expedite this, this, this calendar or schedule based on our control, our rescoping re this project? Uh, and the answer is yes. We may not, we're not gonna do 2021, but we're gonna certainly work to deliver it much faster than 2025, uh, according to what the developer was saying. Um, the second thing I will say is, I go in and out of airports just as you do, and I've seen airports under construction. The first thing that's, the most important thing is to make sure that passenger experience is not too interrupted uh, by that construction. And that's what we're going to work to do, no matter how long it takes us to do this project, to make sure it's not too disruptive of our passengers and, and that their safety is first and foremost. And that was all part of the decision of grabbing back control of this project. And so that's what we're doing. And I can tell you that safety and passenger experience is taking, are taking top priority as we move forward with this project. So can you give us a year when you think this will be done? <laughs> well, well, we're going to tell you when it's going to happen. Um, but right now, we are already moving in with uh, uh, some potential partners to take a look at the project so that we can begin to rescope it and to get it moving forward again. Um, and in most expedited process with safety and pasture experience, top priority. 
Uh, but also finishing this thing um, in the greatest, quickest time we possibly can. But it's still going to be a quality project. That is not something we're going to compromise going forward. This is going to be slimmed down and trimmed down from what it was originally going to be now? Quite possible. I mean, the key is to make sure we deliver this project uh, within the financial uh, uh, framework that we laid out for it. And we may have to rescope it to do that. But at the end of the day, we're very proud of Denver National Airport. We're very proud of that great hall. And we want whatever we leave behind to be something that the people of this city and this region are proud of. And all of our passengers, no matter where they come from around the world, can walk through there and be proud to be in that great hall. Are you proud of the process that we've gone through here? No, I mean, not at all. I can tell you that we can improve this process. I can tell you that we as a city and as an administration are going to get much better in uh, shaping and forming and delivering these type of projects going forward, particularly how airports and cities around the country are working to do these now through P3s, uh, public-private partnerships. We have to get better at this, and this is a very valuable and uh, to some extent a painful lesson for us to learn. Uh, but the goal is get better at it, and that's what we're going to work to do. You know, this is in large part, I think, going to be part of your legacy as mayor. Mm -hmm. uh, the airport project that, call it whatever you want, but uh, way behind schedule, potentially over budget, at least it was project projected to be potentially over budget. What's it like knowing that this thing is going to be hung on you and you're going to wear the jacket on this thing for your entire legacy? You know what, the reality is I never make projects or being uh, mayor of the city about me. The moment we do that, we've lost. Uh, really the purpose of why we run for office. Um, the reality is this is about our great airport. It's about the people of the city and this region who care greatly about this airport. I can tell you there's no greater booster or set of boosters than, than uh, Kim Day and myself. And we're going to do everything we can to deliver uh, the Great Hall back at even better than what we had before we started this project. That's a commitment we have. You know, the way I look at this, if I had a contractor in my home, uh, let's say finishing or redoing my kitchen, and all of a sudden we had some questions come up, unexpected things, and that happens. Um, but yet we determined early on that we can get past those issues or those issues are not as great as we thought they were. But yet as a contractor, you tell me that after a couple of weeks of delay, we now are looking at maybe an hour, a year of delay and 50% higher cost than what we initially negotiated, even though we were able to move away or at least dispel those concerns. You know what, as, a, as, a, as an owner, I got to make a tough decision. And if we were going back and forth and we couldn't get to a place where we can both agree to move this project forward, um, I did exactly what I would do at my home. And that is, I'm going to find a new contract, contractor to this project. And uh, you're excused. And that's exactly what we did at the end this time. Um, we could not come to an alignment with this developer, our partner, and we moved on. And that's in the best interest of the airport and the best interest of all of us who care and love this airport and know how important it is to our region. Just a few other quick things. I mean, this seems like it could potentially cost a lot more money uh, coming out of the enterprise fund that's, that's DIA. Um, do you think this is gonna end up costing a lot more than the 770 million? I can tell you that making this decision um, means that it's not gonna cost nearly as much as was forecast by the contract developer partner uh, to finish the project. And that was part of our decision making as well. When they threw that figure out and said this is going to be $311 million more than the original budget, that stuck in your craw? Absolutely. And, and you've got to understand that we had uh, with us and continue to have a pool of external third-party experts, construction experts, structural experts, legal experts, who are all looking at this. I sat through almost weekly briefings for hours at a time looking at the situation. And not one time could one of those experts say they can justify the things that they're putting up there in, in terms of the costs and the delays. We were all confused. We were all baffled. Uh, and so, you know, the reality is my job in working with the airport team was to take a look at this project in totality, recognize we can probably move it forward with a plan B uh, sooner than had been forecast with delays and a lot less costly. And we made, I believe, the right decision to move forward without the uh, current partner. It sounds like you're saying that they're fudging and being untruthful about a lot of things out there. Let me just say we could not justify what was put before us. And uh, we made the right decision, I believe, on behalf of the airport. So whatever cost overruns there are, you think are going to be less than $311 million? I do believe that. Do you know what the number might be? No, I don't. Um, but uh, we are uh, confident by gaining control of the project that it's much more economically feasible for the airport and for this overall project moving forward.
Okay. Uh, it's a little bit awkward, but I, I asked Kim this this morning, but with Kim in the room right now, I mean, uh, you know, it's kind of the elephant in the room, but a lot of people have said, is Kim Day's job safe? Um, because she oversaw so much of this and um, is such a key figure in this. Um, is Kim Day's job safe? You know what, every one of our jobs are always on the line, but let me say this about Kim Day. What you have in Denver is one of the top aviation directors in the country, recognized around the world for taking Denver National Airport and making it one of the premier uh, airports in the world. Um, this airport has grown exponentially under Kim's leadership. I have tremendous confidence in Kim, uh, and I've asked her uh, directly, Kim, lead us out of this. Address this issue and lead us out of this. Let's fix it. And uh, I have confidence that she and her team are going to do just that. So you're not going to fire her? Kim Day is not being fired. Anything else you want to add? I think that's about all I was going to ask you. No. 